bu şey biraz konuşmasın diye düşünüyorum. All right. Hi, everyone, and welcome to this session about the Translate extension. <coughs> I hope you can all more or less see me. I decided to sit down because we're going to be together for one hour and a half, and I figured that I would rather <laughs> sit down. I hope you're well installed, too. Um, this session is going to be a workshop, um, so I hope that we can find a way that you can like try some things with me. Um, I know that you don't have a lot of space on the chairs, but I hope it's going to be fine. Um, and if you cannot do some stuff right now, it's fine because the slides are going to be shared and the video is going to be shared and you can always watch it later if needed. <coughs> All right. So hello, everyone. I'm Lea Lacroix user uh, Oregon on the project, um, also on, on Telegram. Um, I'm um, in the movement for a very long time, first as a volunteer, then um, as an employee at Wikimedia Germany, Wikimedia Deutschland, and now I'm uh, on my own uh, independent and working on uh, various uh, projects, mostly event organizing, but this is not what I'm going to talk about today. Um, I will share these details again uh, at the end of the slides, so if you need to contact me later, you will very welcome to reach out to me. So, today, during this workshop, we're going to talk about the Translate extension, aka the uh, magic tool that makes our pages on Meta and other multilingual wikis um, translatable in various languages. So, this is the agenda, the very ambitious agenda that I had, wait, um, that I had for us today. Maybe we're going to need to adapt a little bit depending on the time we have and depending on whether we manage to do the interactive and workshop e part or not. Um, we're going to be a little bit flexible. But basically, I'm going to try to walk you through um, how to use the translate extension and how to prepare a page for translation well in um, in one hour, a little bit less than one hour and a half. What? Okay, I don't see it. Okay. Okay, can we turn off the lights then? I'm I'm fine. <laughs> All right. Meanwhile, I will go on a little bit to not lose too much time. So yeah. Is it better? Cool. Yeah. So we will try to have uh, some short uh, interactive parts, also so you have the chance to ask some questions. Um, and if we don't manage to cover everything in the sessions, that's fine. We can talk about it uh, later on during Wikimania, for example. So a few disclaimers before we start, um, because uh, we use the word translate in all kind of contexts, so I wanted to clarify a little bit what we're going to talk about and what we're not going to talk about today. So we're not going to talk about translating content on Wikipedia. We're not going to talk about the language of the interface, for example, on your favorite wiki. We're also not talking about Translate Wiki, which is a very interesting project um, to translate the interface of our websites. We're also not talking about the Content Translate extension, which is this extension that allows you to 
translate content from one Wikipedia to another, for example. We're also not talking about interwiki links. We're not going to touch too much the incubator or Wikimedia Commons. I'm going to focus mostly on Meta, simply because that's the wiki that I know the most. But most of what I'm going to say probably applies to those two. I'm just not really sure about all the rules and the details. Um, and this session is not a session for developers. Like, I'm not going to teach you how to contribute to the code base of this tool, just how to use it. This being said, second set of disclaimers, because I was very nervous when preparing the session because I don't know 100% of the things. Maybe people are going to come to me after the session and say, oh, you didn't talk about this and this and this. So I don't have all the knowledge about this tool uh, and I'm still learning um, the little details. I will focus on introdu introducing the topics to newcomers. We're probably not going to have the time to go in all the little details, but of course we can talk about it um, afterwards if you want to. Um, and if you happen to attend the session and actually know more than me, that's awesome. Uh, please share with others, help me answer the questions, help me during the, the workshop uh, interactive session. You're very welcome. Um, and at the end of the slides, I will share links to the documentation pages that we have so you can go and explore uh, even further than what we will have time to cover during this workshop. And um, I was about to like give this whole workshop without even talking for one minute about why do we actually need translations? Why don't we just write everything uh, in English on our projects? And of course, we don't want to do that because we're an international movement, because we care about having our content um, accessible, um, especially to people who do not speak uh, English as a native language. Um, and so usually on our projects, we're trying the best that we can to provide our documentation and description of our projects in other languages. And this is why we're doing all this. Um, but it's an endless job because there is always new pages to translate, always some translations to update. And so before starting this workshop, I also wanted to thank um, all the volunteers who are dedicating some time to prepare the pages for translations, I will, as we will learn today, but also to translate and update the translations uh, tirelessly um, to make sure that our content is multilingual and accessible. All right, so let's dive into the big topic. But first, before, let's just um, do a quick round of like, who of you already tried to like edit pages on Meta, for example, that had these translate tags all around? Ah, so I see. So you're not completely newcomers. Okay. Who managed to do it? <laughs> <laughs> see, I see that we have some other translate admins in the room. Okay. That's good. That's good. Um, we're going to start from the very scratch. And even if you did it before, maybe you're going to learn some uh, some new things, who know? And as I said, you're also very welcome to to support and help. <laughs> because there is issue that uh, there are some guys who know the translation and submission, and they didn't like how we like marking these pages for translation. <laughs> yes, th we will talk indeed about like community guidelines and how not everyone agrees on how to do things, just like what usually happens on the wikis, right? That is not a surprise, and that's al also the case for how to use this tool. Uh, okay, awesome. So, um, let's start with the structure of the page. So this is an example of a page that has the translate extension um, enabled. So we're going to start with looking at what the source page looks like. Um, most of the time on our wiki, the source language is set as English. But just so you know, if you're running your own media wiki, it doesn't have to be. There is actually a hack to not have it as English. But for the sake of this workshop, let's assume that the source language on Meta is English. So the main content, uh, the original content, is going to be written in English. So we're going to have um, the title of the page that will be in English that would also appear in the URL of the page. Um, then you can also see um, the Add Languages button, which is not about the translate extension. It's about the interwiki links, which is different things that we will not cover here. 
And then what you will usually find at the top of the page, but not always, is this list of languages that um, you can see here. And then you have the content itself with like links, templates, pictures, all kind of things. And then you will see um, the translated page, which looks a little bit different. It has the same structure, but um, it's in a different language. In that case, I took the example of Welsh. Um, so the URL is going to be a little bit different. It will be the same link, but with a slash and then the language code of the language. Um, and then the rest of the content can be translated. So the title of the page can be different. The content, of course, is going to be different. Um, and you may notice that there is no more edit button. There is only a translate button. And I will come back to that. But the translated version of the page cannot be edited the way you're used to. You can just translate the original source material. That's how it is designed. Um, and then you still find the list of languages. Um, and you will notice that there are these little symbols here that are indicated the... Um, the, the status of completeness of the translation from, okay, this is fully translated in Welsh, um, up to the empty circle, which says like there is almost no translation available. Um, and uh, this will also be written above the language uh, list. Um, this translation is 88% complete. So this is giving information about the people who may want to translate this page into Welsh, that there is still some work to be done. So now, how do we actually make it happen? How do we take this original material that is usually in English and make it translatable for people to translate to Welsh, Welsh or other languages? Well, in order to do that, we're going to need to split the content in smaller chunks that we're going to call translation units. And on the example of my page, each of the like, menu buttons are going to be one translation unit. The title of a section is a translation unit. A paragraph in the content is also a translation unit. Like Each of this page is going to be um, split into these small, easy to translate uh, pieces of text. Why do we do that? Um, because the translators can work uh, better with small um, chunks of text rather than having to translate right away a big wall um, of text. Um, and before we start diving into the code and how to do things, I thought it was useful to start the journey from the translator's perspective. I don't know, oh, who of you already like um, translated some of the page into one of the languages that you know using this translate feature? Yeah, okay. So some of you already know how it looks like. We're gonna we're gonna have a look at it. So how do you do it first of all? Um, you have um, two ways. If you're already on a translated version, such as the Welsh that I was mentioning, then instead of this edit button on the top right corner, you're gonna have the translate button. It's gonna lead you directly to the interface. If you're still on the English version, you have um, a link at the top of the page that is called translate this page. And then you're going to click there, pick your target language, and you will arrive on the same thing. Um, I realized that I didn't mention at the beginning, but we're going to look at the desktop interface for everything that we're going to look at. I have to admit, I never tried to use it on mobile. I don't know how it looks like. OK, better not try? Mm, very well. <laughs> so we're going to stay on the desktop version. OK, so what does the translator interface look like? The translator interface will start with asking you if you didn't already select it, the target language. So in this example, I picked French. And then it's going to show you um, some chunks of text on the left side in English, our source language, and on the right side, um, the French version if it's already there, or just like an empty field if it's not there yet. And so every time I want to translate one translate a unit, I'm going to click on it. And it's going to offer me this um, interface where I see the source material. And in the field, in the editing field, I can either start typing my text directly in French if I'm really motivated. I also have a button to like 
copy paste um, the source material if I feel that it's more useful to start from English and then edit some, some bits or something like this. And then I have a publish button and then it's going to jump directly to the next um, translate unit to translate. Sometimes there are also some uh, suggestions, um, more or less yeah, generated from previous translations, but I'm not going to get into these details today. Um, but I felt it was important to show you this is what the translator, the person who's going to then translate the page that you're preparing, is going to see. And that's going to be relevant for later. All right. So back to our translation units. The reason why we want translation units is that we want to give the translator this like small piece of text that is easy to uh, handle. Um, and the way we're going to do that is that our in the wiki text, the translation units are going to be identified with a unique identifier, which is something that's never going to change. And it's identified by a number, simply. Um, and so when you're going to see um, the, the code behind the pages that are marked for translation, you're going to see these uh, identifiers that are these T1, T2, something. But we will go back to this um, in a minute. But um, let's take a step back and think a little bit about what is the life of a um, page on Meta, for example, that is has this translation feature enabled. So we have the people who have been creating the page on the first place and then later on will maintain it by adding content, deleting content, editing content, and so on. And these people ideally are also the ones that are going to prepare the page for translation, meaning they are going to add this mysterious structure that we're going to look at um, to make sure that um, the page is ready to be uh, to be translated. Then there is an additional step, which is uh, basically feeding this hopefully well prepared page into the tool, the translate extension, um, after having checked that it's been prepared correctly, and it's going to perform an action that we're calling mark for translation, which is basically going to activate the tool, and the tool is going to recognize the different translate units and is then going to assign UDIC identifiers to them if it's not done already, um, make some updates if needed, and then the page can be translated by the translators that are going to use the um, interface that we just saw um, to then add their translations. And then the page will be readable also in Welsh, French, and so on. What we're going to do today is mostly focused on the first part, the role of the people who are going to create a page or maintain a page and prepare it um, to make sure that it's as ready as it can to be marked for translation. <coughs> so what are we trying to do as the people who create and maintain the page and prepare the pages for translation? My opinion is not written in any documentation page is that um, I'm trying to make the translators work as smooth as possible because being a volunteer translator is already a lot of work. As I said, it's a tireless work. New stuff comes up all the time. So I really want to make sure that their work is as easy as possible. So I want to structure the content of the page in a way that then is going to be um, easy for them to handle. I want to help the tool to break down the text into these translate units that we need. Um, and um, if necessary, I also want to add some context for the translators um, and make sure that like, yeah, things are as easy for them as possible to translate. But at the same time, and that's the like double role of what I'm doing, I also want to keep the pages as easy to maintain as possible for other editors. Because as we're going to see, we're going to kind of add a little bit of like text in the wiki code that can already be quite busy. And so, of course, if we create a page that is super busy, super complex, the next, the next person who wants to edit or change something, they're going to be like, <gasps> maybe that's how you felt also sometimes when clicking on edit some page and you're like, whoa, I'm not going to touch that. So we want to kind of be nice to the translators and also be nice to the other editors. That's what we're going to try to see how to do. 
okay, so I just covered the very um, like theory of it. Now we're going to get into the details, but are there any preliminary questions about what we already discussed? And I guess if you have a question, there will be a microphone for you, so the people joining online can also hear it. Wait, 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 wait. Um, okay. First, you two, and then you. Um, I'll just say that uh, the list of all the other translation tools that you showed was really good. There is a talk on Friday, I think, of the state of language onboarding, which goes through most of the other ones. So if you were disappointed by that first slide, go to the other one. <laughs> Uh, I just wanted to clarify that I raised my hand when you asked if we had edited the page with translations. Um, I many times did that, but was unsure whether I did it correctly or broke anything. So maybe others are in the same situation. So, so just to give you <laughs> the context. Uh, we need a microphone over there. Uh, you told that uh, or original pages are usually in English. Can I mark up uh, the page in some other in other language to translate it to English and other languages? So you can, um, yeah. There is a there is a bit of code that you can add to say like, okay, no, the original language of this page I want it to be I don't know German, and so then the others will translate from German to English. I didn't include it here, but it's in the documentation somewhere. Possibly, yeah, I didn't check this in details. Thank you. Um, do you uh, automatically get all the languages or is it also possible to have four? I'm just, I'm because I'm thinking of a project where I'm gonna be using people who speak three languages, so it might be confusing if all the other languages are there as well. The, yeah. So as soon as you... Um, as soon as you m mark a page for translation, it becomes available for translation to all languages. What the translate admin can do is set up some priority languages, but this is mostly for the volunteer translators to, I don't even know what it actually does. Does it ping people? Yeah, uh, it like you're uh, naming these languages as a priority, and uh, it shows in uh, the as a red in that box, so it means you need to first translate this if, if you want. But if you don't want, then Okay, I'm just gonna, just yeah, yeah, okay. So you can, um, yeah, select priority languages, but there is no feature that will like completely prevent you to do not translate in this language. It's just that, I guess, in your case, if you are have page that you really want to be translated, then you need to make sure that you have some people, volunteers or not, who will like actively work on it, basically. Um, I, I have an answer. Uh, the admin can restrict the some languages. Yes, they, they can block, but how you can block for 200? <laughs> yeah, and I, I'm not sure that this is really the, the vibe that we're aiming for, right? To oh, like block languages, no, but I so. Mean, yeah. has a point because, some, yes. I mean, you have people that don't know how to use it as an admin. Yes, that is true. I actually saw that on some of the pages that I'm working on. Okay, um, let's move on maybe. I don't see any other questions, so I, I think... One more question. Yes, you have the microphone just here. Mm -hmm. <coughs> well, I lost <laughs> the idea. Okay, continue, please. Next time. Yeah, okay. Um, all right. All right, so now let's go into the technical aspects of it. How do we actually prepare a page for translation? So as I was saying, um, I'm gonna talk only about the desktop um, interface here, and we're also gonna use mostly the uh, wiki code. Um, the translate extension is now handled by the visual editor a little bit better than it used to, um, but I'm still not sure how to actually edit and do the things that we need to do through visual editor. So we're gonna have to um, use the wiki code. 
And um, if it's not done yet, um, you can enable uh, syntax highlighting for your Wikicode. This is going to be very useful, not only for that, but for everything you do in Wikicode. You can do it, I think, it's somewhere in your uh, preferences, but also directly in the edit bar there. So you will see the tags that we will use a little bit better. All right. So let's start looking at um, some pages with some um, translate markup. So we're going to start with these translate tags that you probably already saw. You can see them there um, on the page. So what is that? Um, the translate tags are going to wrap the parts of the text that need to be broken down by the tool into these translate units that we talked about. Um, you're going to need to open this translate tag and close it with this uh, bar um, at the end. Um, and if you already did any kind of um, hacking around with the um, development, you already know that an open uh, container always uh, must be closed. And then another very important thing that we're going to need to add is this um, languages uh, tag, which is the one that's going to display the list of languages that we saw earlier. So the languages section, it just needs this uh, language slash uh, tag, nothing else. Um, and it may, will add the list of languages, not immediately, only when it will be marked for translation. So you, you won't see it immediately, but don't worry about this. It's a self-closing tag, so you don't need to open and close it. You just add it. And um, typically, I would say, it's added at the very top of the page, but not always. In some cases, people prefer put it at the very bottom of the page or more rarely below the menu bar. Like It is flexible. You can put it a little bit wherever you please. So once you have done that, in some cases, that's enough because the tool that we talked about, the translate extension tool, is going to be able to break down the text that you wrapped into the translate tags on its own to make this short translation units that are useful um, to the translator. Um, so the tool is pretty good to recognize um, some of the things. It's pretty good to recognize different paragraphs mostly because in wiki text we actually split paragraphs with an empty line so the tool is going to be like oh that's a different paragraph okay cool um, and it's also good at recognizing titles if you put an empty line after the title um, so if your page just contained that you're actually almost done um, because the the tool is um, is going to be able to recognize it but for the rest as soon as you have things that are a little bit more complex we're going to need to help the tool into doing the breakdown in translation units So I'm going to go through a few of the usual formatting that we find on a wiki text. I'm not going to have time to talk about all the things, but I'm going to talk about the most um, usual things that we found. Uh, the first being bullet points. We love bullet points on wiki pages, on documentation pages. We have them all the time. Um, but if we don't do anything special, the tool is going to interpret the bullet point list as one big translate unit. Um, in some cases, it's actually fine. Um, because if the list is really short um, and maybe it needs the full context to be translated together, then it's probably better to keep it as one translate unit. Always keep in mind that the translator in their interface, they're going to see this as one thing to translate. But in some other cases, for example, if we have a very long list or if each item is a very long sentence, we probably don't want to push all of this to the translator in one. That's too much. So we're going to need to break it down. But the tool doesn't know how to do it. So we're going to need to indicate to the tool, OK, this is one specific um, translate unit. So we're going to do that um, by wrapping each of the points of the bullet point in its own translate tag. So an important thing is that because we probably opened one before uh, for the paragraph that were before the list or something, we're first going to need to close the previous container. So, OK, this is one part. And then we're going to open um, a new translate tag for each um, point of the bullet point list and then close it at the end. 
And um, we usually do not wrap the actual bullet point um, inside the um, inside the translate thing. I'm actually not really sure why, um, but yeah, that's that's the way we're doing it. So we're keeping the the bullet outside of the translate. Hmm? Yeah, yeah. Um, generally, the um, we're trying to avoid putting too much of like the wiki code formatting stuff to feed that to the translators because let's say the translator forgets to put the bullet point in the translation, then the display on the translation page will be all broken. So in some cases, we actually keep that out of their mental law, right? They can just focus on the text. And that's what we're doing by wrapping only the parts that we need. And then once we're done with this bullet point list and we have, I don't know, another paragraph, then we're gonna reopen a translate and we're gonna start looking at our page again and seeing um, if we need to break down other things. Um, yeah, so just to show you a little bit what the difference it makes for the translators. So if I don't break down my list, I'm gonna feed them like, like this big um, paragraph. This is actually not so big, but imagine a bullet list of like 10 items. It's gonna be like super huge on the screen or whatnot. Um, and also, yeah, the bullet points themselves are in the text, so there is the risk of making uh, mistakes. When, on the other hand, if I have broken down uh, the points, as I mentioned, um, the person's gonna have to translate directly just the sentence. Um, and of course, they will still have the full context because since they can look at the other translate units, they can still understand that this is a list and they can look at the source page anyway, just to, to make sure. So again, this is a, a way of making the work a little bit nicer for the translator. Yes. Uh, microphone, please. Actually, breaking down the, the list or anyway, the big paragraph has also the advantages that uh, the indicator of the quality of the translation is preserved. Otherwise, any change you did, uh, even a small word uh, in, a, in a part of the list will invalidate all the list and this will drop the, the quality of the translation, at least as perceived by the tool uh, in there. Ah, yeah, interesting. I didn't think about that. Okay, so um, now that we started looking a little bit more at the code and before going into our first um, interactive workshopy part are there any questions if there are feel free to raise your hand and we'll pass the microphone i see one here yeah so um you made a, a very good point by saying you know um making it easy for the translators by putting the tags like bit by bit would really help. Sometimes you just have a very big text, like a very long uh, page. I don't know if there is any tool aside from um, the main translation extension. Sorry, the the um, if there's any tool that actually helps people to sort of include these tags easily, rather than having to do them line by line, like. If anyone knows. Does anyone want to answer? Because I don't know of any tools. That's actually why I'm still doing it by hand and teaching you how to do it. But if someone knows some tools that can help. Uh, yeah, there's um, below the edit box, there's the uh, input box thing. No, not input box. Uh, char insert, character insert, uh, and there's the translate tags there. So you can just uh, mark up the, the line that you want to mark and then press the translate tags in the other tools. Yeah, so it's um, so you don't have to type it with your fingers all the time, but it's not doing it magically the full page, right? You still have to select, okay, I want to mark this, and then you click, right? There is a special tool, uh, but you need to go to special pages. And there are like a uh, button where you can click to like uh, mark the page for translation. There is such tool. And you're just entering the name of the page here and it's marks. But uh, sometimes it's missed something. So still no okay. idea of work. Oh, but I didn't know that. Yeah, thank you so much. Yeah, let's repeat it maybe on the microphone. Yeah. 
Okay. And in special pages, there are translation section. And in translation, uh, translation section, there are in second part, uh, it's in bold. Prepare page for translation. Did you see that? Yes. Just click on that. And there are enter the page name. You need to copy and put the uh, page name there and just click to prepare. And it previously shows you uh, how it marks. And if everything is okay, you can just need to click and it will be prepared for translation. But still, there is no guarantee that everything will be fine. That's brilliant. Then this workshop is over. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> no, I'm just kidding. As you just said, yeah, I there are probably things to, to double check anyway. Uh, but it's really good to know that there is this page that is doing at least part of the, of the work for you. Cool. Any other questions or comments? Uh, the page ID, you, you, had note, you had said that for some pages you can just put a big translate tag at the beginning and at the end and close it at the end and the uh, page IDs are done for you. When is, when is that done for you? <laughs> this is not done right away when you're doing it. This is the part that requires the translate administrator to click on mark the translation and then it's going to kind of trigger the tool that's going to add the ideas. We're going to come back to that um, in a minute. Okay. Uh, oh, yeah, one more question. Okay, uh, is there a way to provide context to the translator? Sometimes, uh, especially when the text is separated, um, we often find, you know, a difficulty when translating because there are similar words or something that's not too clear. In a lot of translation tools out there, they have a way to insert um, the context behind each string. So is there a way for us to do that here? There's no. Well, so before translation, you need to read them all the page. You can. You could include uh, at that point uh, an HTML comment uh, uh, phrase. Yes. Maybe look. Yeah. Uh, I think there is something. Can you open the translation interface? I can't really because or my slide are actually not there. It's just I can't oh, okay. really show my screen, unfortunately. So um. uh, in the code messages, we can add documentation for each message uh, with a special language code. And it shows that to the right of the message. And I think, as far as I remember, I've seen that in on wiki translations as well, that that field is normally just empty in the translate interface, but it's, there's still a link there, edit documentation for this message. And as far as I remember, you can add documentation for a message there. Yeah, it would be to the right. I guess you've cut that yeah, off in the screenshot. Yeah, let me <laughs> show you another. Because, yeah, I actually looked into this and decided to not include it in this workshop because it was already a uh. lot. But, yes, there is a special code that you can put in the text that will then um, add something there in the like documentation part but i didn't investigate it so much i have to admit i don't i don't use it but there is, i know that there is something microphone please yeah there is two things it's if uh, the text similar somewhere in the in our translation is it suggests you to use that translation from in our document, and you can see uh, the source of document. And the second thing, it uh, suggests directly something from Google Translate or Mint uh, as a translation to your language. Yeah, I don't think that's the same thing. I, um, I was talking about this, the fact that you can add some kind of a little comment, which is not an HTML comment, but something different, that the Translate extension tool is going to interpret and display here a side of the... Um, the automatic translation or something like this. Um, but um, yeah, that's uh, something that is described better in one of the documentation pages that I mentioned, uh, that I will mention at the end. All right, um, I suggest then that we move on to a little uh, activity that I prepared for you. Mm -mm -mm. 
Okay, so we're going to try to keep it um, short because I want to make sure that I go through the all of my session. But if you are up to it and if you have your laptop set up um, and everything, you can uh, try to mark a simple page for translation. We're not going to use the trick of the special page, otherwise it's cheating. The idea is to try it yourself if you want to. Um, so I created a tech a test page that you can access at w.wiki slash capital A K capital P capital D. I hope you can see it. And from this test page, there will be a button that says create your simple translation test page. And if you click it and you're logged in and I did my homework right, it should open to you a sub page of your user page with some content that you can then uh, test uh, to mark for translation according to the, um, the few rules that we just learned. So we're going to take, um, yeah, five minutes for this. Let me know if you are having a, a problem with the, <laughs> with the process. So for people who've been trying, how's it been? How's it going? <laughs> yeah? Yes, exactly. Uh, question over there? Hmm? Um, 
Have you been creating your own page? Oh, interesting. Okay. Yeah. It's not it's not marked for translation yet. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, I want to, okay. Yeah. Okay. Um let's move on then. So, um, yeah, if you've been doing this little exercise and you save your page, it's a little bit disappointing. Basically, not much is happening, right? Um the yes. No, for the heading, if you just add an empty line after the heading, the tool is going to recognize that it's a different thing. So you don't need to put any particular translate tags around the headings. Um, OK, so basically, once we did that, there is um, not much happening. And then you may wonder, like, OK, what's happening now? Where are these mysterious identifiers that you told us about? Where are the translations? Um, but the thing is that nothing is going to happen just yet because, as we said, um, the, par the page needs to be marked for translation by a translate admin before it becomes uh, parsed by the tool and before we can start translating. We're not going to do that on your test pages um, here because it's not going to be particularly uh, useful. But after this workshop, if you want to come to me or one of the other knowledgeable people and you can start working on actual pages that are useful for the community, then we can do this together. You had a question? Okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Afterwards, we can also, I will, I will ask later who's, uh, who's the translate admin, actually. Uh, because these translate admins, we're going to need them um, for the next steps. Um, but for now, let's leave this uh, test page as it is. And let's go into a little bit more of specific uh, translate translation syntax. So, um, as I said before, my goal is to try to make the work of the translator as easy as possible and also to prevent mistakes to happen. Um, and whenever I put something in a translate unit, this thing is going to be displayed, is going to be given to the translator to be translated. And sometime it's going to be some kind of weird wiki code thingy that we have. The, my example here is a button, but this button has these like curly brackets and then the name of the button and then the title and then the URL. And among these things, there are some things that should not be translated. They should be kept exactly as it is. And if the translator, if I give everything to the translator, uh, the translator may um, make a mistake, change something, and then the display is going to be all broken on the translation version, translated version. We don't want that. Um, so we're going to need to find ways to give the translator as much as possible only what they have to translate so they can focus on that and we do not um, break anything. DND? Hmm? Uh, oh, okay. We're not going to get into templates today. This is already quite advanced. But yes, when we're getting in the realm of templates, there are various options to get templates that can be translated. I just took um, an easy example for, for that. Um, okay, so let's explore a little bit two options um, to give the translator only what they need to translate. Um, so one thing that we can use in our example of this button, where at the end of the day, the only thing that we need and that should be translated is the name of the button, like the, the label of the button. Then I can wrap only the name of the button into my translate tags. So the tool is going to recognize it as just this as the translate unit. And I would do it by um, putting the translate uh, tags only um, inside of the code of my template around the, the label of my button. And what it's going to do is that it's going to give the translator only the, only the text. Um, 
the positive aspects of this is that the translator can focus only on the text to translate, nothing else, no weird character that they would need to retype or copy paste or anything. So also less risk of mistakes. Um, however, there are a few downsides. For example, the translator doesn't have a lot of context here. If they don't look at the main untranslated page, they don't know that it's a button. And in some languages, it may matter to know exactly where this text is going to appear. Um, and um, the translator is not able to edit at all, I don't know, the URL or other parameters of the template in our case that they may want to. This is all invisible to them. They only have the label of the button. So we have another option. The other option is to wrap the uh, fixed content, the content that should not be translated, into a variable. Um, so the variable is basically a bit of text that is not going to appear to the translator, but it's going to appear under um, a variable name. Um, and in that case, um, I decided that for my button, still the same button, I'm going to show the fact that it's a button to the translator, but one thing that I want that I don't want them to touch <coughs> is the URL, because if they make a mistake in, tra in trying to translate the inside of the URL, I know that it's going to break my button. I don't want that. So I want to give them to hide the URL um, behind a variable that then I'm going to give to the translator. So here the code is a little bit different. Um, because the full code of the button is inside a translate tag. Okay, very well. So it's going to appear a little bit, as you can see, uh, for the translator, they're going to have the curly brackets and stuff like this. They're going to have a little bit of code to type, but the URL is hidden behind this um, uh, dollar sign URL symbol. That's how I called it. Um, and so they have um, less to do. And also, in the translation interface, they can either paste the full, full source text in English and then edit only what they need, which is what I recommend to do when you're a translator and you have some weird wiki text to translate. And they can also click on this URL simple button at the moment where they need it, uh, so they don't need to retype it and make mistakes. Um, why is it interesting? It is interesting because at the end of the day, it's giving the translator a little bit more context about what they're translating because they can see in the text that, okay, it's the template clickable button too, so it's probably a button. Um, it's giving them the possibility to change some things also if they want. Um, but there's also a little bit more wiki text to type in or to copy paste um, for the translator. So variables, how does that work? We're going to use another type of tags, which is called TVAR. Maybe you also saw it when you were looking at um, editing some translatable pages. Um, and here it wraps the content that will be displayed as a variable to the translator. So um, again, it needs to be open, it needs to be closed. It only works when it is within some translate tags, which makes sense because this is kind of a feature of the translate extension, so you, d you don't need outside of this context. Um, and you need to give it a name. Um, for example, what I used in the previous example, I type tvar space name equal, and then between brackets, um, I give it um, a name. And this name is going to be um, displayed to the translator. Um, as we see here, there will be this dollar sign and then the name, so it should be short, it should not have spaces or um, any kind of special character. I think it takes underscores or something like this. Um, and uh, to my opinion, it should be understandable and related to the content that it's hiding, kind of. Um, however, this is one of the points where not everyone in the community agrees. Some people prefer giving it just number, one, two, three, etc. cetera. Um, but back then in computer science university, they told me to always give understandable names to my variables, so I keep doing it. You can um, do what you prefer, I guess. Um, question? Okay. Oh, we have the one here and then here. Yeah, so the variables, they have to be different, right? They, they can be simple URL, simple URL, simple URL. They have to be like simple URL 1, simple URL 2. 
Um, that's something that I never fully understood. Sometimes it seems to work, sometimes not. Does someone else have actually the answer to that? With the microphone, please. Yeah, uh, it needs to be unique, but only within the translate unit. So within those translate tags, it needs to be unique. Uh, but if you use it in two different translate units, you can use the same name. So I, I often use just URL, for example, uh, as the param parameter name. Uh, yeah. Cool. Thank you so much. I didn't know that. Yeah, so you have the translate tags, right? Uh, open and close. Uh, so within that one, you can only use the name. Well, it has to be unique, uh, but in two different ones, it, it doesn't have to be unique. Cool. We had another question here. Yes. Uh, it was. I had the same question, so it's. Ah, oh, okay, perfect. All right. Um, let's go on and look at another use of the variables, which are links. So we have a lot of links on our pages, and we're going to need to deal with them um, as well. Um, and typically, we're going to use the variables to uh, hide the um, the URL or the, the target of the link. Um, so as you probably know, we have two types of links. We have the external and the external links and the links that are internal to our wikis that all um, each have their uh, wiki code um, style. Um, and then we're going to wrap within a translate uh, tags, we're going to wrap the uh, target of the link um, between some, some TVAR variables, as we just said. Um, so for example, when we have an external link, then we're going to wrap the entire URL within a, a variable because usually the translator doesn't need to translate it. Uh, it can just proceed with the variable. Um, and same with the uh, internal link. And when we're using um, an internal link, uh, for example, to another meta page, what is nice to do is to use the um, special my language uh, prefix so it would link uh, the person to um, the version of this new page, this target page, that would be in their language, or at least in the language of their interface, if I remember correctly, which is uh, usually the language that they are also reading in um, at that moment. Um, there are other ways to deal with links that I will not mention today. There are There is a specific uh, template that is also used for links, um, but this was more like to show you um, another very important use of this um, um, variable tags in the translate uh, syntax. So that's what it's going to look like, for example, if we had our external link and our internal link. Um, again, we're giving the translator only what they uh, need to translate and the links are kind of hidden. Um, there may also be some cases where you actually want the translator to have access to the links for reasons. And in that case, you would not put it in variables. But most of the time, it's actually fine to do it that way. All right. And then we also have the case of uh, pictures or other media. And here we have the same question. We're like, OK, what are the parts that we need a translator to translate? And what are the parts that they should probably not touch? And it's better that way. And usually, the, um, ti the title of the file, we don't need to touch it. Usually, not always. Um, and so we can just wrap the description or the, um, ah, the accessibility, um, what do you call it? The, the 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 help the the alt text exactly if we want that to be translated as well so these are the parts that we may want to translate but the rest we don't want to um, but in some cases we actually need to have the translator review the title of the file and I'm thinking for example um, about these files on Commons that um, you can add a different like they are in different languages and you, you need to, to change the title or something. So depending on the case, basically, you're going to either wrap only the description of your um, thumbnail, for example, 
into translate tags or you're going to give the full thing and you're going to let the translator deal with it and maybe change the things that they want to change. Um, we have a question over there, please. Thank you. So some SVG files, they have a feature when, where they can be multilingual. Can that be incorporated in here? Is it possible? I think so, yes. Okay. Actually, the uh, capability of the SVG file to, to be have a translation is uh, independent from what is here. So the, the SVG file will uh, show the, the language according to the setting of the computer of the people that is looking at. So if the computer has a language that is matched by the SVG file with the translator capability, this will be translated, but it's not directly linked to the interface. There is an image option, lang equals foo, which will override the system language and, mm. and set it. Um, and I think there is a brand new um, parser function, uh, which I just added last week, to put the language tag of the user's language. So lang equals bcp47 and, and bracket should be, I think, what you need. Um. <coughs> just uh, just uh, for uh, com uh, better, uh, let's say, portability, to other languages, uh, when you're talking about the uh, pictures, uh, you normally should also leave the uh, opportunity to change your right to left because not all uh, languages are normally showing the picture on the right. Cool. Thanks a lot for adding this information. Okay. Um, are there any other questions? Yes, we have one here. I actually have a request. Uh, so if you are in a translatable, translated, this translatable page and you find the old legacy version of Tiva, which is Tiva with pipes, it would be nice if you could change that to the new version with the name equal viable. Um, I'm being hyper confusing here. I'm sorry. Yeah. <laughs> you know what I'm talking about? I, I do know. Yeah. <laughs> so I, I actually have a slide about that, but we can talk about it for a second. The translate extension tool has been evolving through time, mostly for the better. Um, but then some ways that people have been marking pages in the past are now, like, not necessarily invalid, but at least now it's the old ways, right? 